many years now, I've been one of the people writing Fashion Police in Us Weekly. Mm -hmm. So if you're a fan of Us Weekly, if you still get a magazine, it's funny. It's not on the website. You have to actually buy the magazine to see the Fashion Police. Oh, really? They don't post that just on the web? Really? No, it's only it's only in the print version. So there is still a print version of Us Weekly and people still do get it. And I know that because I have a lot of friends that'll go to a hair salon, pick up a magazine and call me or text me and be like, hey, your name is in Us Weekly. (laughs) I didn't even know. But I've been doing I've been part of the fashion police. They call us the top cops. Mm. I've been one of the top cops for years. I think I started I want to say like 2013. Like that's how many years I've been part of Us Weekly. Right. And um, I used to do more stuff for them. I used to write columns for them. I used to be an expert when they needed advice on like, uh, you know, me as a psychologist, whatever, or as a pop culture expert, they used to take my commentary on stuff. They don't do that kind of stuff anymore. So I'm just one of the quote unquote top cops. And over the years, they have changed editors many, many times. And I have made it through all of the machinations every time a new editor comes in Mm -hmm. but there's always an adjustment period you know the editor came from either another department or another magazine they do things a little differently so you got to adjust to their way of doing it and then eventually it all gets figured out everything's fine but every once in a while over the years you get these people that have these epic quit moments where they send an email to all of us and it's always something like fuck this fuck you, screw you, I've been writing for free, I'm not putting up with your bullshit anymore. It's always some takedown, like epic quit kind of thing, Mm -hmm. which is funny because we don't get paid to be there. So quitting something you're not getting paid for, all you have to do is when they send you the email, just hit delete. Mm -hmm. Don't You don't have to quit. Yeah, you don't have to quit. No one's one's sitting there counting your paycheck or wondering, you know, why? Oh, we haven't heard from Cooper yet. Mm -hmm. Literally, Brad, we're on a deadline. Where is she? Get her on <laughs> <Right>. the phone. <laughs> you'll get what will happen is you'll get an email like a couple hours before the deadline. They'll say, hey, I have I still haven't heard from some of you guys. Can you get your jokes into me? Bye. And they'll give you a time. Mm-hmm. But, you know, me, I'm an A student. As soon as I get the email, I send the jokes back. And meet, I already sent mine out. It's not due till tomorrow at four. Mm-hmm. I've already sent mine out. I'm done. You know, that, that's just how I go about doing things. So. There's a new guy there now who came from another department. He's never done this before and no one trained him. And when he first started sending us the thing, what they usually do is they send us the pictures one of three ways, either through Snapfish. That's how we did it for a long time. We'd go to Snapfish. They gave us a code. You put it in and the pictures would come up and Mm -hmm. then you would make your jokes. Or they would send you little JPEGs of the people were making fun of in a in the body of an email mm-hmm. um, or there was another like email platform like another kind of like um, snapfish kind of thing I forget what it was called but it was like another one of those so this new guy hasn't quite figured that out yet and what he's sending us to is links that are on the Getty page that we have to then figure out which ones are the celebrities which picture they're using of the celebrities because there's like four different pictures um, and who the celebrity is because mm-hmm. there was one where there was somebody that was fully masked up and there was no name underneath <laughs> it. He don't even know who it is. But it was like the person was wearing glasses, like this weird hat, a mask, and then like a cape. So I just did a reverse look up on the, you know, I figured out myself and it turned right. out it was like some, it was some YouTuber that I like some YouTube star that I would have never, it wasn't like it was Angelina Jolie that I was like, oh, there's Angelina. Mm-hmm. It was some YouTube star whose name I had to look up. It was a whole thing. But it's like, I was thinking like, why am I doing all this? Like, why is this my job? Mm-hmm. Like, I didn't send the names, nothing. So over the weeks, it's starting to get a little better and he's kind of figured it out a little bit more. But what they usually do is at the end of the week, when your jokes make it in, they used to send us a hard copy of the magazine. They've stopped doing that, that's, which is fine with me, and they send us the PDF. This guy hasn't sent any PDFs. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, all right, you know, if you go to my website, you can see the jokes that I make from Us Weekly, but nothing's updated there because... This guy doesn't send PDFs. I have no access to. I'm not going to go buy a copy of Us Weekly to see if my jokes made it, you know? 
So today, other people, I guess, are also feeling this frustration. So this guy whose name I won't say sent this email around to all of us. And let me tell you, there's a, there's a couple of real housewives now that are on our list. There's a couple of like known comedians. There's one or two people that are faces and names that you know because you see them on TV all the time, like comment- commenting or whatever. He sends this email to all of us, including the guy who now runs the Fashion Police page. Mm-hmm. Okay, here's what he wrote. Hey, Fashion Police. Rarely do I get around to looking at the magazine when it's on newsstands. Hence, I just found that since Travis has taken over, I have not made it into a single issue. (laughs) I have been with Fashion Police for years. Admittedly, even back then, it was still a ridiculously stupid gig. We weren't paid. We weren't invited to events. The position didn't further your career. And nobody cared that you did it. In fact, one time, I didn't get laid because I wrote for fashion police. (laughs) The woman was so horrified that I wrote for something as crappy as us weekly. She immediately ended the date in (laughs) in retrospect. I kind of respect her for that. Mm -hmm. But eight years ago, magazines still had some relevancy these days. If I tell somebody I write for us weekly, the response is like, what's a magazine? More importantly, when I started here, at least the joke writers were treated with a small nugget of respect. The editor would maintain somewhat of a personal relationship with the writers, and he or she would send you a copy of the magazine. Somewhere along the line, the mailing discontinued, replaced with a, hey, you're in this week email. And that was phased out into a generic, hey, everyone, here's who made it this week. And that turned into the sack of lazy pig vomit. That is the current fashion police staff. Wow. In which the editor does not bother to tell anyone anything. So why have I continued to write the jokes? Well, to be fair, at this point, I can pretty much do it in my sleep. As my few longtime top cops will attest, me too, it gets really easy after a while. Give us five minutes and we'll give you 20 fashion jokes. So it's not like it takes up any time. Plus, it's a a nice way to stay joke writing sharp while I'm on my breaks from my paid writing gigs. That Travis, and by the way, Travis is a new editor and he's on this email. Right. That Travis was so incompetent during his first week as editor. And you know what? It's not entirely his fault. After all, this is Us Weekly. Presumably, there is no training guidance or instruction you write jokes i'm picturing an office of distracted bored dead inside 20 somethings on their phones swiping on dating apps browsing the internet for a better job hoping maybe this is the day kanye stops by the building while occasionally regurgitating an episode of 90 day fiance to pass off as an article in order to meet their deadline i suspect nobody told travis what to do So during Travis's first week, along with my joke submissions, I offered some advice. Hey, put a name to the photographs. Use one picture for each celebrity. Hey, the photographs need to be bigger. Travis thanked me. And the following week, Travis completely ignored my words. (laughs) Instead, Travis's second week as editor was the exact same. He took none of my instructions. I was a bit annoyed. And I wrote, once again, when you send out an assignment, you must dot, dot, dot. Was I being unreasonable? Well, Travis must have taken this personally because he has never allowed a single one of my jokes into the magazine. BT and AT, before Travis and after Travis. Wow. Before Travis, I was in the magazine every week, usually with multiple jokes. After Travis, I have not had a single joke published. Either I suddenly stopped being funny Hmm. or Travis is a vindictive, petty asshole. Or maybe both. Wow. So I bid adieu to the fashion police. It was fun. And to be fair to Travis, it was time for me to leave anyway. One cannot move forward while at the same time clinging to the past. I wish you all well. It was super fantastic getting to know some of you personally. By the way, nobody got to know me personally. Um, I'm in the process of deactivating most of my social media sites, but I will always keep my Facebook. Should any of you send me a friend request? Of course, I will accept. Stay funny. And then he signed his name, but I'm not going to embarrass him further by telling you who it is. (laughs) Wow. He was 
butt hurt. I mean. Wow. Is that an overreaction or what? You think? There's, there's a reason why. You were calling this guy saying, you're not doing your job right. It's like, guys, like, send that dude to voicemail. I, 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 no, it wasn't, no, he wasn't calling him. He was emailing him. Oh, God. He wasn't calling him. He was emailing. We don't have their numbers. He was emailing him and saying, here are my jokes. And listen, by the way, when you send them, you might want to send the names. You might want to do this. Why don't mm. you try that? So. Wow. Poor guy just got a job and here's people yelling at him in email. He's like, I don't know what I'm doing. Just got a job. Well, here's what I think. I don't think Travis got a job. I think Travis has been there for a while. He does other things. I, of course, as soon as I saw his name, the first thing I did was go to Instagram and I found him. He has a lot of followers on Instagram. He has a lot of followers on Twitter, um, on TikTok. Like Travis is a fucking player. He's mm. a, he's a dude. And my guess is he's probably one of their favorite people there and does other things. And they just saddled him with fashion police on top of all the other things Travis does there anyway mm. so I, I don't think it's the i don't think they hired him out of somewhere else and now he's stuck now this is his only job i think travis is very busy and i think travis has a lot of things going on and this is not his main this is, he didn't come to us weekly to be the editor of fashion police mm. i think they settled him with this and he's doing the best he can and the girl that left was un- unceremoniously fired so because she was abruptly fired and there was no smooth transition. Like our last girl, they gave her um, a raise. They gave her a promotion. So she trained the new the new chick. Here's what we do and here's how we do it. She introduced all of us. This last girl out of nowhere gets an email and says, I don't work here anymore. Thanks for everything. You guys have been awesome. The new guy's name is Travis. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. So not only did she not train him, I don't even think she ever met him. She just, it was like, take your shit and get out of here. I wish Travis would respond to that email <laughs> Yeah, and say, if one of your jokes was half this funny as this email, I probably would have po- <laughs> posted one, <laughs> but that, that was funnier than any joke you've ever submitted. Thank you. Have a nice life. Right. Travis. <laughs> <laughs> I love how many times he had to say the name Travis in his email. Like he's so angry at Travis, like in, as if Travis is the problem. Like, Poor guy, Travis. He's just trying to do his. The guy's just trying to do his job. Like, you know, again, like this is just something else they they gave him to do. He has a list of shit to do, and he's like, "Oh, I got to do this stupid fashion police in the middle of like these twenty thousand other things I got to do here." Yeah, he's got to go to work every day for a magazine. You got to know when you walk in that door. It's like, oh, I could work at the newspaper. That would be even worse. But no, I'm in a magazine. Uh. Well, no, they're online. Usweekly.com is a big part. You know, that's a big part of it. Don't you remember when Peter Grossman was here from Us Weekly, mm-hmm. when it was just a magazine, he was trying to convince them that the wave of the future was the Internet. And they were like, no, we're a magazine. Mm. And they fought him the entire time. They didn't want to be a website. And then TMZ came and uh, people dot com and CNN Entertainment and everybody was that's why Us Weekly is not one of the go to places right now. Yeah, because I, I I don't think they, I've ever been to it. Of course not, and they they don't have breaking news there. They tried really hard. The powers that be who run Us Weekly tried very hard to just stay a magazine. Mm-hmm. They were not going to kowtow to those kids and their technology. <laughs> These kids in this Napster, stop right. it. <laughs> But that's what happened. And and um, as somebody who I used to work at Cosmo Girl, um, and most of the time I just wrote stuff and sent it in. But once in a while, I would have to do something like at Cosmo Girl where I went in. Mm. And let me tell you, mag- the magazine world, it's really intense. There's a lot going on. There's a lot to do. It is really busy. And the middle of your day, trying to get through everything you got to do to get to your deadline, somebody calls a meeting mm. or there's a dignitary in town or suddenly, you know, who we were doing for the cover is now doing some luncheon that you have to go to because they're your cover. You know, it's like Ashley Simpson. She's on the cover this week. So we have to go to an Ashley Simpson lunch. It's like, I have a deadline at four. Lunch is at two. Mm. <laughs> I don't see how this is going to happen. So it's very stressful. 
Um, I don't know. I got to tell you, like I'm, I'm on Travis's side. I feel bad for poor Travis. Yeah. I, I, I don't like this guy's way of, of doing things at all. Um, no, Travis is learning. Leave Travis alone. Leave free- Travis alone. <laughs> He's our Brittany. Hashtag free Travis. 